All right, we've been talking a lot about quadratic equations, and quadratic equations are of the form ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. And in the last video, we talked about using the quadratic formula in order to determine what the roots are. Um, in order to determine what the roots are, we don't actually have to solve the whole thing out. Sometimes we're just trying to graph, and we want to have an idea of what the graph's going to look like. So what we could do is we could use what's called a discriminant. And the discriminant is what is underneath the radical sign. Um, in particular, or I guess I should say specifically, b squared minus 4ac. Now, what's going to happen is, if you have a negative number underneath the radical sign, you can't do anything. You're, you're kind of stopped. I mean, radical negative 1 equals i, but we're talking about real numbers, and we're talking about real roots. So if you have a negative underneath the radical sign, it doesn't matter what negative b and 2i is, you're, you're finished, you're done. And so if b squared minus 4ac is less than 0, in other words, um, there's a negative underneath the radical sign, then one thing is certainly true, there are no real roots. And if we were going to graph something like this, it would be a parabola that's something like that or like that. And you'll notice that it does not cross the x-axis. Similarly, because the radical sign is plus or minus, if you end up with 0 underneath, it's going to be negative b plus the square root of 0 over 2a and negative b minus the square root of 0 over 2a. Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so it's really negative b over 2a and negative b over 2a, which implies that there's only going to be one real root. And once again, if we were going to take a quick look as to what this would look like, it would be a parabola that touches the x-axis at exactly one spot. All right, now, what happens when the parabola goes through the x-axis at more than one spot? It goes through, it can go through at a maximum of two spots. Well, if this number happens to be, if the discriminant happens to be greater than zero, a positive number, but, uh, and a perfect square, let's say it's 9 over 2a, this is going to be negative b plus 3 over 2a, or negative b minus 3 over 2a. It doesn't matter what b and a are, because they're both integers anyway. I mean, a can't equal 0, I guess I should say that, but that makes sense, because if it were 0, then you want to have a quadratic equation. In any event, when you do this, you get two roots, and they're going to be real rational roots. So it's two rational roots. However, if the discriminant, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, but it is not a perfect square, you do run in with a problem. And the problem is this. Um, let's say we had, I'm just going to make something up, let's say we had something like negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 6 over 2. Well, that's negative 3 plus the square root of 6 over 2, or negative 3 minus the square root of 6 over 2. 6 is an irrational number. And if you add an, an integer to an irrational number and then divide it by an integer, you still have an irrational number. Similarly, if you have an irrational number, you take a negative 3 minus an irrational and divide it by an integer, it's still irrational. So these, when you combine them and you put the whole thing together, you get two irrational roots. You could actually find the value for these. Um, we know that square root of 6 is somewhere between, uh, let's say, 2 and 4, um, and get a decimal value, but it's not going to be a, a, a terminating decimal or repeating decimal, obviously, because it's irrational. Um, if you're trying to graph this on a, on a graph and you want to make it as accurate as possible, get a decimal approximation, maybe use two spots, one spot. Um, 
Otherwise, if you're just looking for the actual roots, this answer and this answer are not only perfectly acceptable, they're perfectly correct. A decimal approximation is just that. It's an approximation. So that's how you can use the discriminant to determine how many and what type of roots you have for a quadratic.